In this section of the bridge, we're going to look at um, linear equations, inequalities, and basic, some very basic algebra. And if you don't like algebra, doing A level is going to be a nightmare for you. It's so algebra rich, and in core one, you need your skills to be top notch. Um, this will probably be second nature to many of you, um, but hopefully, we'll pick up on a couple of things um, straight away. What we need to be able to do is factor expand brackets, solve equations, understand and solve inequalities, know the rules of inequalities, and just basically be absolutely proficient at the skill. Fractions, basic fractions in equations, but this tutorial is about becoming slightly more efficient at what we do. So let's just look at some examples. As I say, I'm not going to dwell too much on it. Now, if you're looking at this thinking, um, I'm really not 100% sure, uh, I suggest considering um, whether A level is for you because we need this 100% nailed. If we just take the first one, I'm not looking at solving this, I'm looking at making this significantly easier to solve. What I want you to start looking at doing is thinking to yourself, can I make that easier? And the answer is yes, because all of this will divide by 3. So we can have x plus 2 is going to equal 16 and x will equal 14. And of course you could have gone the long uh, shot at that. You could have subtracted the 6 from both sides and divided out. Lots of the work that you'll do at A-level will be uh, requiring you to be absolutely effective, uh, well efficient in what you do. Let's look at this for example. Um, many of the students um, I've taught in the past have looked at this and automatically they want to expand these brackets out. We don't need to. It's saying 4 lots of this quantity is equal to negative 8. If we simply divide both sides by 4, we're left with 2x plus 3 is equal to negative 2. Subtract the uh, 3 from both sides, 2x is equal to negative 5. And then divide by the 2, x is equal to negative 5 over 2. Expanding this would have given us 8x plus 12 is equal to negative x. Then you've got to deal with this to get 8x is equal to negative 20 x is negative 20 over 8, then you've got to simplify that by dividing out again. We want to get absolutely as effective and as efficient as possible at these very basic skills. Here's another nice example, dividing both sides on this one here by 4. leaves us x plus 15 is equal to 15 and automatically x is going to equal naught. Yet if you expand that out, 4x plus 60 is equal to 60 is just more hassle. These ones, x over 4 minus 1 is equal to 8. Look at this nicely, just adding 1 to both sides makes this all the much easier to solve. So we've got um, x over 4 is equal to 9. Remember, it, we're adding to both sides, and it still surprises me for a number of people that say take it off both sides. We're doing the inverse. A number divided by nine is uh, divided by four is nine. We simply need to multiply both sides by the four. X is equal to thirty-six. Okay, so this is stuff I'm now taking for granted that you are comfortable with. Prime another example: split it by two. Look around for them. Split that by two. It's no great um, bonus, but the bigger the numbers you work with, that's a good one. Split that one by five. X plus two is equal to one. Split that one by three. Split that by three. So you're making this work a lot more effective for you. Um, so when you come to solve, you've not got the hassle. Okay, let's look at some of these and just sort of have a, a play about with some of these now. Now, we'll focus on this one. Four is equal to eight minus x over three. We kind of just want to get x by itself and make x a subject. Subtracting the eight from both sides, minus four is equal to minus x over three. At this stage, if we can get used to the idea that um, minus, a minus number equal to a minus number is simply going to give us that value in the positive form. You could look at that as if you're multiplying through by negative 1 or swapping their sides. So multiplying up x is equal to 12. This one here is slightly, um, slightly more interesting. What I want to do is get the, um, the x's on one side and the numbers on the other side. Now, minus x over 4 or minus x over 6. This is a bigger value. So if I chuck it to that side, I'm going to keep positive. So let's subtract 1 from both sides. And we've got 1 minus x over 4 is equal to x over 6. Uh, negative x over 6. 
add the x over 4 to both sides. So we've got x over 4 minus x over 6. And this is a, some simple addition or subtraction of fractions. Um, and we can do one of two things. You can either turn these into 12s or you can cross multiply. If we turn them into 12s, we'll have 3x over 12 minus 2x over 12. Okay, and that's going to give us 1. So what we'll see is that we end up with now x over 12 is equal to 1 and x is going to equal 12. And of course, if you put that back in, let's see if it, it stacks up. It's always good to check what you're doing. So 2 minus um, 12 over 4. 12 over 4 is 3, so 2 minus 3. Does that equal 1 minus 2? Well, the answer is that's negative 1 and that's negative 1, so it works. Let's look at this one. Do I need to expand the brackets out? The answer in this case is yes, because I can't divide. There's no common factors. 3 is prime. So we'd have to expand this out, 4x. And another one, and I'm guilty of this, make sure you get an 8. And that's going to equal 3x plus, and again, one of my killers, put in 2, 6. Try and keep the x's positive, subtracting an x on both, 3x from both sides, and then adding the 8 to both sides. So you're making your work effective. Add in the x uh, over 3 and subtracting the 5. Keep it nice and efficient. Okay, let's see what else we had. Okay, let's look at this right here. We've got x over 3 plus x over 4 is equal to 14. If I combine those fractions, I'm going to get 4x plus 3x over 12 is equal to 14. At this stage, what we can do is the following. We've got 7x over 12 is equal to 14. Now, at this stage, you're thinking, well, I'm going to multiply up here. Let's make things easier. 7 and 14, we can divide both sides by 7. x over 12 is equal to 2. So x is going to equal 24. Think logically. Think, make things easier for yourself. If you multiply 12 by 14, thinking to yourself, does that come off the top of your head? Well, 10 times 14 is 140, and then we're going to have to add it, and then we're going to have to divide. Why not just split both sides by 7? We'll look at some of the, the quadratic um, types later. Another option for you, if you prefer a different route, is if you're trying to solve something like this, we can multiply throughout by the common Denominator, the common denominator on this one would be 12. So if you multiply all of this by 12, then the denominators are going to drop off. This one here, we can look at cross multiplying. 3 over x is equal to 4 over x plus 2. If you cross multiply, we'll get 3, the quantity x plus 2, is equal to 4x. We've cleared the denominators and we've got a straightforward task to do. We've got 3x plus 6 is equal to 4x. Subtract 3x on both sides and 6 is going to equal x, or x is equal to 6. And you say to yourself, does that stack up? Well, put 6 back in. 3 over 6 is going to be equal to 4 over 8. Is that right? Well, that's a half, and that's a half. So it works. The same here, cross multiply. Multiply that side by the x, that side by the 4. We could multiply this whole thing right here by 6, rather than combining it all. So it's making this easier for yourselves. Okay, inequalities. Inequalities, um, in the, although I dislike saying it, you can use many of your skills uh, that you know with uh, equations to solve them. There is a fundamental difference though. For example, if I've got minus 2x is greater than 5, uh, no, we'll go for 4. If I divide by a negative or multiply by a negative, the inequality sign must change round. So x will now become minus 4 over 2, dividing both sides by the 2. We must change that around. That's a key thing. Dividing and multiplying, we must change them around. So just to run you through this, x is greater than 5. x is going to be equal or greater than 6. x is strictly greater than 3. 4 is strictly greater than x or x the number we're looking for is less than four if you get used to this terminology it should make sense one 
is greater or equal to x, or x is 1 or less. So different ways of doing it, and I'll assume that you're quite comfortable with these. Now, in terms of inequalities, sometimes, very rarely, we'll have to look at solving some of them. Um, and these are, are double inequalities. All we're trying to do is just strip this down to where it was before. So let's look at this one. We're told that 3 is equal or less than 4x minus 5, which in turn is less than 15. I'm trying to divide it all by a common factor, and that isn't one, so I'm going to have to start messing about with this. I need to con uh, keep consistent. So my first move, I've got 4x minus 5. I'm going to add 5 to all parts. So adding 5, I'm going to end up with this scenario. Now I can divide all of the parts by 4, and that will just give me a value in terms of x. So that's a strict inequality, isn't it? So dividing by, I'm going to have 2, and then I'm going to have strictly less than 5. So all we're doing is stripping them out from inside out. Subtract 7 from each side. Divide by 4 is from each part of this. Add 7 to each part. Divide by 6. Subtract 5 from each part. Divide by 4. So just be a little careful with these. Um, again, these sort, we're trying to look for common factors. 22, 3 and 23 are not going to work. So we're going to have to now look at solving this. A couple of ways you can do it. Expand this out, subtract the number, divide by 3. This one here, we can work this out by multiplying both sides. And we'll work on this one next, actually. Now, be careful. That is a positive, so we can do that. We've not come up against a negative yet. So if I multiply all of this by 2, I'm going to get 1 is equal or less than 4x plus 5, which in turn is going to be uh, less um, which is going to be less or equal to 2. So at this stage, I need to subtract 5 from each part. So minus 4. And then in the middle, I've still got my 4x. And then I'm going to have minus 3. I now need to divide each part by 4. I don't have to change signs because it's negative. It's not negative. So we're going to get negative 1, x, and then minus 3 quarters. And we read this as x is between negative 1 and negative 3 over 4, and inclusive of both values. We can graph these on a the number line, um, and this will start to help. Graphing these on a the number line. For example, now, if uh, I wanted to show the following inequality, that x is going to be strictly greater than 1, then we find there's 0, there's 1. And it's an open dot, and we show it that it's going this way. The number we're after is going to be strictly greater than 1. If we wanted now that x is going to be less or equal to minus 2, we locate minus 2. So here's minus 2, and it's a closed dot. And the number we're looking for is only ever going to be as big as minus 2. We might have one where x is going to be greater than uh, minus 3, but in turn less or equal to 2. We have a closed dot here, there's 2, and here's negative 3, open dot, and we'll be somewhere in this range. This is something we need to get used to, uh, and I'm kind of hoping you are. So there we go, inequalities and equations. The idea is that you should be fairly comfortable with these, and it's a case of simplifying them, if you possibly can. If you can see a common factor that you can take out, take the common factor out. Again, I've rushed through this, so apologies if there's been any minor um, arithmetic errors, but that should give you a basic understanding or idea of what you already know, plus a bit of simplification. But that's an absolute given that you can do all of the stuff in what we've just looked at.